Gray is here on the Blaze Radio Network. And welcome to it. Thanks for joining us. 888-900-3393. Pat Unleashed on Twitter. Uh, haven't even completed my wiping down situation I yet. I see that. Yeah. You're running a little bit behind here. Running, huh? running a tad behind. Yeah. On the... Uh, you know, on the germ situation. Yeah. Yeah. Man, we had some sad news in D.C. Oh, uh, my gosh. It's just so sad. He's such He was such a good guy. Yeah. Such a good man. Uh, Joe Lieberman died. Apparently, complications from a fall. Yeah, I watched an interview with him Dang. from last week. Oh, really? He was on uh, responding to Chuck Schumer's comments about Israel mm. and um, seemed to be doing great. He was on with mm. uh, Neil Cavuto. And uh, like you said, he had a, a bad fall. Uh, was it he, after that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, because uh, mm. the interview, I think, was on the 18th or so. I mean, it was a week and a half ago. So, yeah, 82 years old. Um, the man who was, uh, what, 537 votes away from becoming vice president of the United States? Yeah. Joe Lieberman. Yeah. Al Gore's running mate. Uh, that, was a, that was a bad time, uh, I thought, for Joe, because he seemed to compromise some of his. <laughs> yeah, yeah principles to in order to side with uh al gore who is i I mean (laughs) he was a reasonable man you know yes i didn't agree with him on everything Mm -hmm. uh but um he was he was moderate and he was one of the last moderate democrats right and and liked by uh everyone on both sides of the aisle yeah and that's because he was such a great guy He, he was uh we had him on the show a lot when we lived in connecticut and and he was just a good man, just a really good guy. Uh, so he'll be missed. Joe Lieberman gone at eighty-two. Uh, it's just sad. I mean, everybody from you know the from the the people that I looked up to in my lifetime, mm. they're all going away. Seems like now I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Notice not. But like I said, everybody I looked up to. Oh, uh, I yeah. missed that qualifier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. So the Baltimore bridge collapse. Mm. Uh, very strange situation. Yeah, they recovered, what, two, two bodies? bodies? Yeah. And I, if I understood, they're just going to the salvaging efforts now because the other bodies are apparently in such a way that they can't get to them. Really? So, wow. Yeah. Is it because of the wreckage of the yeah. bridge? Yeah. Oh, jeez. I think they're inside vehicles or something, if I understood correctly. Uh, and that's going to take a while. Yeah. Mm. Did you see how long it's going to take to rebuild the bridge? Five to six, uh, 10, 20 years? Yeah. The government's well, involved, it could. right? It, 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 the, the article I initially saw the headline for was two to 15 years. Okay. And then inside the article, it said more like 10 to 15 yeah. years. 10 to 15 years. So the government. To rebuild that bridge. Is involved. Oh my gosh. Got it. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing that's crazy is this video that Chris sent around to us yesterday with these ducks disappearing. Have you seen this? No. Okay. Play this clip one. This is crazy town. What's going okay. on here? Watch the bridge. Watch the bridge. Whoa, hey, hey now. Whoa, go back. Play that again. Wait, they what? Just, they just vanished. They, the ducks just flew into the shot and then poof. What? Where did the ducks go, Pat? <laughs> okay. Hashtag, where did the ducks go? <laughs> and I'm sure there's a reasonable explanation with with. I'm sure there is. Absolutely not. But, I don't know what it's it is. It's a glitch in the matrix. That's the explanation. It's a glitch, the glitch in the in matrix. The matrix. <laughs> yeah. Glitch in the matrix. Uh, it could have been. All it right. could have been the guy running the the switcher just had one camera up, uh, and then the other one was just halfway. You're right. It's a glitch in the matrix. What's going on there? Isn't that weird? Mm-hmm. That is weird. It's weird. Yeah. That's like the, the planes that disappeared. MH370. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. As long as you bring that up. Mm-hmm. Who was it? Was it... Uh, I forgot who brought this theory up on the internet yesterday about um, 
and you and I hate it when you have to depend on translations mm -hmm. because you have no idea what this video is saying. But apparently, there's some uh, CCP whistleblower who says that they've been making stuff disappear uh, for a while, or uh, making make, they they made Malaysian Airlines flight they they controlled it right, mm -hmm. and that uh, this was a total hack job by China, and that they've done things like this in the Hudson River uh, that they hijack stuff. By hacking in, and I mean that—that's that theory is as good as any right now. Mm. Weird, uh, yeah. Uh, that would be bad because I thought it was our tech. Uh, in the explanation that we get from the mm -hmm. other guy, yeah, that you talked to on yeah. your show, mm -hmm. uh, I like that better. That it's our tech. Yes, that we disappeared them. Yeah, if it's China, that's not good. Well, Laura Logan has been reporting uh, on this. <clears throat> she is out in front. On everything related on the to the Baltimore, MH... no, Baltimore oh, Bridge Baltimore, situation. Yeah. yeah, the Baltimore and Bridge. And her sources mm -hmm. are saying it's absolutely a hack job. Um, really? Oh, yeah. So, so somebody hacked into it. That's the predominant theory right now. Yeah. Oh, man. Jeez. That's, I'm sorry. I, I should say that, that's the predominant theory that I'm going with. How about that? Uh, we're going we're gonna to hopefully have her on mm -hmm. and uh, talk about it. Because she's got some interesting uh, thoughts and, and information. I mean, she's got sources, you know, because yes. she's a journalist. And that's all she's doing is just relaying yeah. uh, sources. She's telling you what intelligence people are telling her. Yeah. and, and So I'll, I don't know. I don't know. I'll say that it's uh, a little curious that the day before this occurred, uh, Christopher Ray, as she reported, um, uh, put someone in charge there at uh, the Baltimore office uh, who is uh, uh, really... Uh, uh, big on the counterterrorism efforts. Oh, really? Just, mm. just 24 hours before this happened? Just... Well, and then ducks disappeared. And then you got the how, ducks how, that disappeared. How long was that before the bridge collapsed? No, yeah. it was after. They, they... Oh, it was after? Because what happens is... <laughs> yeah. Oh, see, okay. see. oh, yeah. So, okay. Yeah. yeah, I noticed. I thought it was... Okay, so a new theory. Whoa. New, Whoa. Th new theory. It's the ducks... Weird. ...and they return to the scene of the crime. Ah. Or... And then they vanished back... Through the uh, portal, <laughs> they're like, "Okay, we we just want to make sure we saw." Birds uh -huh. aren't real theory. Oh wow! Just got proven. There you go. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I, the, the the stuff that Lara Logan is reporting on is just mind blowing and uh, terrifying. Quite frankly, uh, here's her update: analysis from specialists in predictive behavioral analytics, counterterrorism, hazardous materials, maritime attacks, cyber. National Security and Intel. <laughs> this is their view. Based on their training and experience, they believe this was two types of operation. <clears throat> One, penetration testing, where they're probing slash testing to identify vulnerabilities in our responses and defenses. It's like a, a test operation. And uh, two a shaping operation to set the conditions and prepare the battlefield for a potential future event. Oh, cool. Concern is that other critical infrastructure disruptions hits recently that appeared to be independent, isolated events may not be. For example, the Ohio chemical disaster, train derailments, fires at food processing plants. How many of those have there been? Hundreds. Literally hundreds. Mm -hmm. Literally hundreds. We don't even talk about them all because there's so many it happens all the time and a lot of them don't even get reported anymore it's just so commonplace but uh the fires processing plants when taken in isolation don't appear to be that significant but when taken together could indicate shaping or stacking operations mm -hmm. that are paving the way for a bigger event where they do any number of these types of operations together that could potentially paralyze the u.s so the critical question our government should be answering right now is this. When will they trigger a multiple episode that causes the paralysis effect? Some of the indicators are how many incidents have occurred within a relatively short timeline and what they see, see as the departure from what is normal. They believe it, those in charge will make sure the investigation into the bridge crash goes nowhere quick. <laughs> And one of the goals here is to give the public mental anesthesia while they test this using train derailments or exposure to chemicals in Ohio, where they told everyone to shelter indoors, to ask questions like, did they comply? Is this going to successfully deceive and cause behavioral change? Jeez. 
Uh, they <laughs> use the media to create the assumptive narrative. What? Do not want the facts analyzed because they do not want people processing the truth. Truth naturally leads to questions they don't want asked. But it would be foolish and naive at the expense of national security not to question the government narrative on the Baltimore Bridge crash, crash given the level of corruption in spheres of power and influence in this country today. Well, that's exactly why we don't believe anything we're told. Nothing. Certainly not initially. I mean, initially, they don't even know what they're talking about most of the time. They don't even know. And if they do know, we don't believe them. Yeah, who, who are we supposed to <clears throat> trust anymore? Yeah, I don't know. It, <laughs> you certainly can't trust the government. No, 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 no. With many years of experience in spoofing, the tactic used in cyber warfare to hack into someone's system and deceive in order to achieve a certain outcome, they recognized multiple indicators watching the video that tell them the GPS signal was likely hacked. It would have led them to believe they were not as close to the bridge as they were, and maybe why in the video you see the crazy lean to port and then to hard starboard as they realized they were not on the course in spite of the GPS indicating they were. Hmm. Uh, in information warfare terms, here are some of the tactics they see being used now that many of you will recognize. One, engineered complexity, where they throw in nonsensical variables to distract. This is designed to keep you from serially processing multiple channels and give you processing overload that prevents you from toggling different channels of information i.e. they create processing decoys to distract you from truth. Two, they're trying to reframe the issue by focusing on details that don't matter. They do this by throwing in a variable that's not relevant to the main question. Number three, common sense, skepticism, and intelligence are huge overlays that get in the way of manipulating human behavior, so they analyze you to learn how to create channel overload as you toggle slash handle different channels of information such as the speed of the boat, temperature of the water, whatever. And four, they need to load you up with enough variance to create channel overload so you create an error that can use that they can use to discredit you. Yeah, they man, I mean, that happens all the time. One way is to create doubt in yourself. Most effective because you make yourself less efficient when your brain is processing self-doubt and it will propagate into the future. Population is so much easier to dupe today than it was 20 years ago. So take that for what it's worth. Laura Logan. Be that as it may. I mean, Good this stuff. is a uh, former uh, 60 Minutes correspondent. Right. She's got contacts. She knows people. She's a really good journalist. And uh, they try to discredit her now because, you know, she's she says things like this. Theorist. Yeah. Yep. Okay, well, she's been right but on a lot of stuff. She sure has. And, and before most people. And I don't know that this is what's going on here. I don't know if this was some kind of hack. I don't know if it's an act of terror. I, I don't Domestic, foreign, who knows? I don't know. But what she says is plausible, and that's why we're going to talk to her. <laughs> so uh, we'll see what happens there. Uh, also, I, I noticed that the uh, Washington Post right away has jumped into the fray so that they could attack Francis Scott Key. No, The bro. man uh, for whom the bridge is named. Oh, no. What yeah. What are you doing? Yeah, because <laughs> you can't, I mean, you can't let that stand. Do you know that that's named after Francis Scott Key, the person who wrote the Star Spangled Banner? Ha! <laughs> Guy had slaves! Okay. Okay, when they oh, rebuild geez. this bridge, it ain't going to have that name. <laughs> Probably won't. I bet it won't. I bet it won't. And that's why they've started this process already. Yep. I mean, we're probably 15 years from that bridge being completed and even needing a name, uh, and they've already started the process. So I think you're I think you're probably right. I think it's almost a foregone conclusion. It will not be the key bridge anymore. Find a minority that uh, has yeah, died right. at the hand of cops in Baltimore. Yes. And there's your oh my gosh. new bridge name. That's for sure. <laughs> we should look up. Uh, okay. Recent or and then we'll make the a last... prediction and we'll go to yeah. the yep time capsule later. So, uh, in a Wednesday article titled 
Who was Francis Scott Key? Controversial <laughs> poet the bridge is named after. The paper reminded about Key's racist views. Francis Scott Key is best known for writing the poem that became America's national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner. He wrote the lyrics the morning after an 1814 British attack on Fort McHenry, which is right by the collapsed bridge. As the Post previously reported, the Star Spangled Banner did not become the national anthem until more than a century after it was written because of controversy, partly over Key's racist views. Okay, keep in mind, nobody even knows. <laughs> nobody even knows the verse they're referencing here. And you could make different things out of that third verse. But, of course, they bring it up. One section of the poem's third verse in particular has come under scrutiny from those who say it was intended to mock or threaten African Americans who escaped slavery to join the British forces after being promised land in exchange for their service. <laughs> okay, so Francis Scott Key, a patriot, obviously wanted America to win this war and would have been pissed about anybody siding with the British at that time. Uh, come on. The verse says, and this is the third verse, nobody ever sings it. Yeah, you know, most people don't even know it exists. No refuge could save the hireling and slave from the terror of flight or the gloom of the grave. And the star-spangled banner in triumph doth wave or the land of the free and the home of the brave. Okay, so is that a warning to them not to join the British? I don't know. Does that mean it's racist? I don't think so. He didn't want anybody joining the British. The paper also did throw in, for good measure, that critics have pointed out that as a lawyer, Key defended several slaves, and he freed several of his own slaves. But they still have to make him into a bad guy. Um, because we revere him. We revere the poem he wrote. I mean, and you can't. You know? You can't. You've got to believe that this is a terrible country, and terrible people were involved in its, its founding. Jeez, I just, I'm so tired of it. I'm just so tired of it. There's, there's nothing that's okay in American history anymore. We have to uh, be ashamed of it all. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. Pat Unleashed on Twitter. I love this story mm. about uh, John Stewart. <laughs> I think oh, this is yeah the hypocrisy. Oh my gosh, so this fun. is incredible <laughs> because he's had an absolute cow over uh, uh over Donald Trump of course and uh what's going on in his trial he uh he's facing a bit of a backlash right now he opined on the air this week that Donald Trump's civil real estate case for overvaluing his properties was quote not victimless unquote when it turns out the price of a previous home sale uh find Stewart doing the exact same thing. So John Stewart giving Donald Trump crap for yeah, possibly overinflating the worth of his the worth properties. of his property, which was not a victimless crime. That's, he that's himself, he John Stewart himself, overvalued his home in New York City. He's got a penthouse there, of course. He valued it at seventeen point five million dollars. Yoku. How much was it worth? Uh, it was assessed at one point eight million. That's a little bit higher, I think. Well, it's eight over eight hundred percent higher. I'm looking for the exact figure. I think it's eight hundred and fifty nine percent. Something eight hundred and twenty nine percent. Eight twenty nine. Okay. Eight hundred and twenty nine percent overvalued, so, John. Okay, but let's not lose sight of the uh, facts here. John uh -huh. Stewart said that it was not a victimless crime for Trump to do that. <laughs> right, but I guess it is I when, guess he, it does is it. when he does it. Uh, it's <laughs> real. <laughs> Every time, I, man. Every time. Every time. It's, it's uncanny how this happens every time. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, so, will he experience any backlash? I don't know. Just probably a little bit online. And then everybody mm -hmm. will forget. And he's just so funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. He's so funny. Don't worry about it. He's just a... Now, he's just a comedian. Don't worry about it. You know, whereas when he's delivering opinions uh, on 
critical political issues, why then he's a political commentator. But right now, I'm sure he's just a comedian. <laughs> he's just funning with Trump. Uh, get over <laughs> <Funnin>. it. Funning. <laughs> Uh, by the way, it'll be Freddie Gray. It'll be the Freddie Gray Memorial Bridge. Uh, okay, yeah, Baltimore, read it. If that's right. I remember that officers. story. It was a terrible story. Yep, that will terrible. be the name of the bridge. Write it down. <laughs> what do you want to bet? Problem is, we probably have fifteen years to wait. So, uh, oh, we're not even going to be a nation fifteen. So never. never I don't. Mind. Know, if they're still in the yeah, process of naming mind. bridges when they finish this, <laughs> if they finish this bridge. Uh, mm. So anyway, uh, Stewart. Tried to sell his 6,280 <laughs> square foot. Okay, 6,280 square feet in Manhattan. Wow, that's uh, <laughs> that's that's pretty that's good nice. square footage. Yeah, that's pretty good. What yeah. was it again? 6,280. Oh, for 17.5 million. Yeah, yeah. What was the square footage again? 6,280 oh, square feet God, in Manhattan. Can you imagine? That's How gigantic. How many floors of a building is I that? Know, I don't know. Because yeah, everything's skinny and narrow. So you'd have to have. Multiple floors. So. Do you need that much space, Dude, who John? needs that much space? <laughs> Nobody needs that. If I've got an apartment that size in Manhattan, mm -hmm. I'm not commuting to wherever <laughs> the Daily Show studio is. You're just going to yeah, build right. that set in a wing of my 6,000 square feet. Yes, right. And call it done. You I guys mean, no come question. to me. No question. <laughs> so the estimated market value was $1.882 million. Okay, so almost 1.9 million. Mm -hmm. The actual assessor valuation was eight hundred forty-seven thousand dollars. I don't even know how that's possible with 6,280 square feet, but that's where they assessed it. Isn't that weird? It's amazing. That is weird. That's amazing. I mean, it is New he, York, though. He wound up <laughs> selling it. Garbage. Dump. I guess uh, at 13 million. So still way overpriced. 26 percent overpriced overvalued uh when he actually sold it for 13 million in 2021 i okay so the hypocrisy is staggering here yep but he'll pay no price for that it doesn't matter don't worry about it he's just a comedian <laughs> <laughs> speaking of trump uh this should be a donald trump ad oh yeah right here I like this <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's a Biden supporter. He's <laughs> got Biden on his T-shirt. At, at the gas pump. Fact. He's remembering what the price used to be. Mentos. <laughs> Funny. See, when you take a Mentos, you become MAGA. <laughs> Switch from Biden to MAGA. <laughs> MAGA AF. Mentos, <laughs> the fresh maker. There you go. <laughs> so all it takes is one trip to the gas pump and you That's switch funny. to Trump. That's funny. Yeah. I like that. Those stickers are going to start popping up again. The, oh, yeah. Uh, I did that. I did that, stickers. Uh, we need those. Because yeah. price is going out of control again. Uh, but, you know, the Bidenomics, nobody even makes fun of it anymore because Bidenomics <laughs> is so great and everybody knows it. Oh, look at this. Huh? You have one? This. You have oh, a sticker? I, I got. Oh, I got, look at that. I got multiples. Let's go. Who wants them? Oh, I do. I want some because I'm going to put those. I got to go get gas today. So Wait, you're not. Hold on. <clears throat> Let me finish your sentence for you. Mm -hmm. You want those, period. Yeah. And you're going to go get gas And I'm going to go get gas They're not connected today. at all. No, 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 no. I would never put this on the pump. Thank you. Uh, right near the price. Sir. With him pointing to it. No. Saying, I did that. You're, yeah, you're I just, did that. You're just I, I did pointing out that a I'm lot just, of people do uh, that. Exactly. And You I, wanted those for private use inside not me. your home. Not me. I wouldn't deface some gas pump. <laughs> not at all. That would be wrong. That would be wrong. <clears throat> Okay. Okay. Yeah, thank you for clarifying. Yes, that. yes. I think that was an important clarification. Mm -hmm. uh, also, we got a pastor. She's, uh, this is nice. <laughs> got a pastor praying for the death of Trump supporters. This is weird. Chris sent this in. This wow. Is, it's a couple of minutes long, but boy, this okay. is a beautiful, beautiful prayer. here. All right. Okay. Arise, O judge of the earth. Give the proud what they deserve. <laughs> How long, Lord? How long will the wicked be allowed to gloat? How long will they speak with arrogance? How long will these evil people boast? <laughs> they crush your people, Lord, hurting those you claim as your own. Okay. They kill widows and foreigners <laughs> and murder orphans. He's talking about MAGA. The Lord isn't looking, they say. What? And besides, yeah. the God of Israel 
does not care. Trump supporters. Hmm. Let me pause right there. Pause, please. You all today, as we reflect <laughs> on the storming of the Capitol by supremacists, <laughs> you all, I find myself grieved, uh -huh. angry, look behind him, exhausted, and fearful uh -huh. in the wake of the events that have transpired in Washington, D.C. And you're going to see them now. We have seen the horrific images. <laughs> got to be kidding me. <laughs> Look at that. Look at the horrific. That's her horrifying we right there. We are reminded of the reality <laughs> that supremacy, oh boy. Oh racism, no, racism, the one guy. thirst for greed flag. and control at any cost <laughs> is unfortunately still alive and well. And I say today, shame on every preacher and pastor uh -huh. who primarily through their silence and okay. in other ways through their words and actions have created a golden calf out of the current administration Read it, baby. because Read of it. their desire of economic gain have been silent in preaching the whole gospel. <laughs> who, through theological and hermeneutical heresy... Her, wait, her, 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 wait, pause it for yeah, a second. We're going to have to do some good... Hermeneutical? Right I don't know, Hermeneutical. Herme I'm sorry, that's a term Biblical? I am not familiar with. It's not in the, the Bible? Hermeneutical? Uh, oh, you know hermeneutical. <laughs> what? It's hermeneutical. It, it means relating to the interpretation of scripture or using... Really? Hermeneutics. Hermeneutics? It's the theory and mythology of... Uh, what am I missing here, Chris? Do you know about hermeneutics? No. No. Okay. No. Wait, well, until yesterday, I watched him. I thought I you like, were a resident <laughs> biblical scholar. I am, yes, but this guy right. stumped me on that one. Yeah, me too. <laughs> wow. I Wow. I've spent a lot of time reading me scripture. Too. And I've never heard hermeneutical. Maybe Fisher. We can ask him tomorrow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. he, he, he will right. know what hermeneutical... Up. Right. Being the scriptorian <laughs> Jeffy is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Tomorrow yeah. we'll ask. Him. We'll ask about that. <laughs> Jeffy, explain hermeneutical and where that comes from. First of all, <laughs> so I love these. Don't worry about what hermeneutical means, okay? Don't you, don't you feel closer to God when you're listening to a guy with a yes. row of socialist fists behind him? I do. I Communist. Do. And uh, when he's fists. talking about uh, people who he disagrees with dying, yeah, you know, having the good. Lord kill them, I guess. Fill in the love. Wow. Uh, Ho let's Holy Week love here. Let's see the rest. Good gosh. Well, and hermeneutical heresy yeah. have nurtured a false doctrine that has separated Jesus from justice. Read it. Read it. I say shame on you. Okay. Uh -huh. And may God have mercy on your soul. <laughs> okay. I hold you in contempt because it is the Pause sheep again of your flock. Uh, you, you see the plushness of his of his church. I mean, he's obviously yeah, I mean, doing well. The flock is <laughs> pouring into that place. I mean, is he in a garage or okay, something we all where start, is this we guy all start somewhere <laughs> okay. this could be his first all right. hermeneutical attempt yeah. here he might be on the threshold of buying some basketball stadium he, uh he may have had uh, a bid in for john stewart's apartment but then he got uh, priced right. out because the dude jacked the price up right which yeah. so it's again not a victimless crime Thank but you. anyway uh he had more have done these acts Keep and in so mind, many this others is a prayer. with the audacity Ooh, to do prayer. them in the name of Jesus. But mm. as my shirt declares, who did, the devil pause is it again. Who did anything in the name of Jesus on January 6th? Did anybody anybody invoke the name of Jesus in that little attempt? I love how he's trying to what? He's trying to push some merch on us there during his sermon. Oh, <laughs> definitely. That's oh, a yeah, merch. Oh, as my shirt that's a merch declares shirt. Oh, I missed that part. It's available for twenty nine ninety five in the back here. Declares. We're trying to expand the uh, studio uh, here. No, that's so it, it great. Says, it says the devil is a liar. Is that right? Okay. Oh uh, boy. Okay. Let's see the rest of this brilliant, brilliant prayer. But as my shirt declares, the devil yeah. is a liar. Yeah, come on. Now because I don't know. These actions are not like the Christ that we serve. They are not like the Christ of the Bible. Mm. Because Jesus, you better listen to me clearly. Yes, sir. Listen Jesus to clearly. will never storm the capital of your heart. <laughs> What? Because the Bible tells me <laughs> Wait. that Jesus stands at the door knocking. Oh, he knocks. Oh, okay. the doubts fill my mind. Right, he's not going to storm. He's going to knock. Renewed hope and cheer. Can unjust hope leaders and cheer claim from that you? God is on their side? Hope and cheer from leaders you? Leaders whose decrees permit injustice? They gang up against the righteous and condemn the innocent to death. What is this music but the coming Lord from? is my fortress. My God is the mighty rock where I hide. God mm. will turn the sins of oh. evil people back on them. Wow. He will destroy them for their sins. Okay. The Lord our God will destroy them. Jeez. Here we go. Wow. All right. So okay. don't, don't be supporting Trump or yeah. God will destroy you. According Amen. To, uh, Gotta be destroyed. That man of the cloth there. <laughs> <laughs> amazing. It's really amazing.
<laughs> should ask him what he thinks about destroying children. Oh. What do you think about destroying babies? Is that a good thing? More coming up. Pat Gray Unleashed. We got some tweets here to share. Trisha Twiss tweets, didn't the bridge recently collapse in the Keys in Florida? Yes. Yes, it did. Didn't DeSantis have it rebuilt in like two months and under budget? Wow. No, Trisha. No. That's just what? ridiculous. What was it? It was like two weeks. Yeah, it was. And it was under budget. Yes. Right? Go. Cool. It was. Okay, yeah. it collapsed on... The 29th. In- September 29th. Mm-hmm. It was rebuilt and reopened on October, October 8th. 8th. What? Of the same year. Of the same year. Is that incredible? So, like, <laughs> That's incredible. A week and a half? 130 yeah. trucks yeah. and workers worked 24 <laughs> hours to get that bridge back up. And this is the Florida Keys, where yes. it's probably not as heavily trafficked as <laughs> the Key Bridge was. Jeez. I, I'm not. Uh, I'm not going to be the first vehicle on that bridge, though. <laughs> yeah, I'll be like, you, you, why don't you try it? I'll, yeah, I'll you be guys back here. that along like the vaccine, huh? <laughs> uh, I tell you what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go a different route now. Uh, Ed McRae tweets: Took a little over a year to build the Empire State Building. No, no, it didn't, hmm? Ed. Hmm? It took eleven months. Oh, wow. eleven months to build the Empire State. So Building. two listeners got them facts wrong. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dummies. <laughs> oh man! It took now. This is incredible. Yeah. It took a year and a day to build Disneyland. Oh, that's my buddy Ed McRae who did yeah. the uh, twelve-part Disney series with me. A year and yeah. a day to build Disneyland. Mm. I'm not sure I've ever heard that stat. That's impressive. You know, and that's 1955, right? 55, I think, I think is right. when they yeah. built that. That's unreal. And yeah. you know, the Empire State Building was built in 1931. 30, 31 in there somewhere? Of course, uh, what Ed leaves out that he also shared in that series was that the pavement in the parking lot was still soft oh, on really? the morning of. Wow. And like people's shoes or something, I forget, were getting stuck or whatever. Worked out okay, though. Yeah. Oh, Seems it sure did. Worked out. It sure did. Yeah, <laughs> kind of did. Uh, they say, and I don't know, I've, I've mentioned this factoid to others, and they've kind of scoffed at it, hmm? but supposedly... Supposedly, you know, they uh, obviously they built the steel girders in Pittsburgh uh, and then they sent them to New York to build the Empire State Building. Supposedly, it happened so quickly yeah. that the steel girders were still warm. I've heard that multiple by the time places. they were put into place. Yeah, Glenn yeah. talked about it yesterday also. Oh, he did? Oh. Yeah, he did. Wow. And now we're talking 15 years to rebuild the Key Bridge. Come on, how how do we go backwards so far? Uh-huh. And then people wonder why we, why we can't go go to the moon because we're going backward. We are we're at least regressing. on construction. Oh no, we are regressing in so many areas in our society. Crazy. Mm-hmm. Nancy's vodka soaked dentures tweets: There has to be time to funnel millions of dollars to their supporters. Can't rush the kickbacks either. Oh, okay, right. right. Yeah, that kind of brings us back down to earth. Mm-hmm. Untrue. Don't. The U.S. blows up Nord Stream Pipeline, and this is retaliation. (laughs) Your words, not mine. (laughs) I was watching another documentary recently, okay, and it was about, I I don't even remember what the topic was, but they were talking about how we blew up a pipeline in Russia clear back in, I don't know, was it the 50s, 60s? I think it's the 50s or 60s. There was a main artery pipeline that russia had that went through siberia and we blew that baby up too Mm. it's not the first time we've done that so congratulations america we're pretty good at blowing up pipelines that russia uses to send things out you know oh gosh i make money don't worry about it that's fine that's fine it's war (sighs) it was i know what it was it was uh i think it was called reagan's war and it turned out to be kind of a negative spin, more than kind of. It was a very negative spin on Ronald Reagan and how we won the Cold War. Mm. But uh, I'm sorry. Uh, did we use deception to beat the Soviets? <gasps> oh, no. <laughs> no, don't say that. Don't, don't say we misled them. Oh, that would just disappoint me too much.
<laughs> uh, Tamara B tweets, did Boeing build that ship? Yep. Asking for a friend. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, so many things right now. It's really crazy, isn't it? It's interesting. It makes you think of the Laura Logan tweet we read earlier. Yeah, doesn't it? Oh, okay. So many things. Eckert and Tom. I think we all know that when a journalist sees and reports the truth, they must be destroyed. We do. That's where we're at. Yeah. I mean, it's madness right now. This is absolute... It's madness. Uh, so put that in your pipe and smoke it. You might want to put it down somewhere else as well. I don't know. I don't know what. Just be yeah, careful with it. Kind of a non sequitur. Don't there. walk away from the pipe. Mm-hmm. Right, right. <laughs> Now, I guess we've got a new racist term that we got to watch out for. This yes, is we do. Interesting. The ADL is saying that the term 100% yep. is a white supremacist trope. What? Yep. So, what? what? Like in conversation, if you say 100%, a lot of times online, if you agree with someone, you'll just type 100, and that just means you agree. Apparently, it actually means you're uh, a racist and you're pushing for white supremacy i forgot what the adl said specifically but it, they're, they're alluding to that it means um you're uh 100 white is that what that is what no? yeah no yeah that's not what it means it's, where do they get that here we go i'm reading this from the where adl website that? shorthand for okay so if you say 100 percent or type 100 percent uh, according to the adl the anti-defamation league mm-hmm. it's shorthand for 100 percent white a hundred percent is a term used by white supremacists. I will tell you that that is the wow. phrase that one Chris Cruz, not a white guy, uses all the time. All the time, uh, <laughs> multiple times a day. One hundred percent. Now, are you? One hundred percent. Are you? Are you a uh-huh. white supremacist, Chris? I have well, to call I you am. Oh, oh, I am. Well, then it comes home. We yeah, we brought it home. Okay, I didn't realize that. So, according to every uh, government paper, I'm white. And then I'm Hispanic. What? Really? Yes. According to government papers, you're white? I'm white. How'd that happen? Because that's the only box that fits me. Okay. Hispanic doesn't fit you? Latino? Well, Latino? I have to be, I'm a white Hispanic. That's a on, white Hispanic. Yes. I have to click white first, huh. then hmm. Hispanic. Boy, when we start talking about immigration Very later, weird. that's going to come up again. We've got some interesting that's stuff weird. with immigration to discuss today. Huh. <laughs> so you're white. Okay, I didn't know that. All right, hundred, hundred percent. No, not hundred uh, percent. You don't say the percent part. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> you I'm said a hundred. I'm not. Like, I'm not chill, hip. bro. <laughs> I'm not hip. The ADL like, says one hundred. The ADL says a hundred percent. So I see black athletes use that all the time. Are they hey, white supremacists? Thomas, well, duh. You talk about being desperate hmm. for something. Look at us. We're the know, ADL. Why? We're relevant. Why does the ADL continue to attack the people who support them the most? Mm. Why? Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously they're taking a shot at the right again here because they think that all white supremacists are on the right. Why do they continue to to attack the people that support them and Israel more than anybody? If you're on social media <sighs> today, be sure to mix in 100 and 100 percent as much as you can. Yeah, I do so love stupid. they have this under numbers slash symbols, uh, white supremacist, mm-hmm. right wing, anti-Semitism. That's a category that 100 is for uh, the ADL. What was the last one? Anti-Semitism. Oh, anti-Semitism. Okay. All right. I thought you were talking about Mike Tyson there for anti-Semitism. <laughs> First day in America. Yeah, sorry. First sorry. day in America. That's right. Uh, yeah, Hillary <laughs> Kennedy will be on later to talk about Mike Tyson and some stuff de- oh. developing with that uh, Jake Paul... Hey, everybody, Bro. it's me, heavyweight champion of the world, Mike Tyson. I'm so glad you get to dust that off. Mike Tyson. You know? Yeah, me too. Me too. It's time. <laughs> but that you know? uh, that fight uh, coming up in July, is that right? Here yeah, in July, Dallas? yeah. Yeah, in that Dallas. might be in jeopardy. Oh, oh why? what? Well, Hillary will join us in oh, wow. 45 minutes. Oh, I can't wait to. I was looking forward to that. Me too. It's a sham, though, isn't it? That's is No, it? it's not a sham. Oh. No, it's state of Texas. Okay. Oh. She'll 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 tell us. Okay. I, I'm sure it'll happen. It just may not happen here. We'll see. So 100 then. 100. Texas is being 100 right now. <laughs> Keeping the black man down. Keeping the black man down. Keeping the black man not down. Not allowing him not to allowing make to his living. Make his living. Oh, that's <laughs> pathetic. Texas 100. <laughs> Are they? Is it because? Well, I guess she'll tell us. But <laughs> the segment begins in 45 minutes. He's what? 56 years old. So they're probably not going to sanction the fight. <laughs> Which is why I think. Is not why they have to make it an exhibition. Or exhibition something? usually it becomes an exhibition. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Because mm. then that would be a slaughter. 
All right. Bloodbath. For all you white supremacists, wow. remember Bloodbath? this guy. Remember this guy, the Venezuelan immigrant who's oh, been gosh. on social media explaining how to squat in houses in America because yeah. that's important. Uh, there he is, <laughs> lovely man, lovely man. <laughs> Came to this country and now he's he's trying to help everybody find a place to live. Is that wrong? <laughs> <laughs> One hundred, like that. One hundred, and it's one hundred. Yeah, a hundred. The migrant influencer <clears throat> encouraging others to invade the U.S. and squat the homes of citizens skipped out on authorities shortly after arriving in the country. Why is that a news? I mean, everybody does, right? Don't they all do that? They all skip out. Uh, he'll be back in twenty thirty seven when his court date appears. Yeah, I'm just gotta be patient. You know? Leave him alone. Don't rush the man. It's a problem here. <laughs> so he posted a new video yesterday. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Do we have that? Yep. And it goes a little something uh, like this. <laughs> I'm in danger. I need protection. <laughs> Wipe your nose. Got snot coming out. Bro, that poor oh, kid. Gross. Jeez. Poor kid. They are They're chasing, chasing me. <laughs> Good. My account has been... Blocked on TikTok. Blocked on TikTok. Okay. Uh-huh. Arrests. Yeah. I'm not in New York. <laughs> okay. They're looking where, for where me. Where are you? I don't know. You need to you can pay attention to what's Shut happening. Up, this guy. All right, kill this. I can't. Ugh, yeah. Oof, anyway, geez. so he says his family's in danger. <clears throat> yeah, it's called a deportation, and it's a long overdue for you. Yeah, you're not in danger. They're just going to catch you and send you home. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, he crossed the southern border illegally in April 2022 at Eagle Pass, Texas, was enrolled in the Alternatives to Detention Program, which allows federal authorities to track migrants, migrants, <laughs> illegals, either using ankle monitors or other technology. However, he didn't follow the rules. He's mm. now listed as an absconder from the program. Yep. Like, they care about that. Right. Well, they only care about it because he's out there making these videos. Yeah. Otherwise, he could be existing just fine if he would just keep his head down. Jeez, they get 350 bucks a week from the federal government. Isn't that fun? I want 350 bucks a week Are you government. serious? And then New York City just New starts York, passing yeah. out those cards. So you get like a thousand bucks or something like that? You're good, man. I mean, you're, you're just, come on in. Wow. We'll take care of you. Wow. There's a lot of stuff going on with illegals that uh making the news, unfortunately. Jeez. <laughs> but this is all fine. This don't fine. worry about it. You're mm-hmm. a racist if if you don't agree with treating them this way. One hundred. <laughs> <laughs> so Yeah, we got this guy. They told the post that to date our agency has had no contact with this individual and we're unaware of his location. He was originally released into the U.S. on parole due to a lack of space oh. in detention facilities. See, this, hmm. our immigration <clears> system <throat> is broken. Well, you know what? What you could do is you could lock the border down while you fix it. Man. So a former ICE field office director uh, told the Post that the Biden administration's reliance on alternatives to detention, which currently includes over a million people, is nothing short of a failure. Yeah. Yeah, you think? The Biden administration, who is also considering granting amnesty... And handing out green cards to illegal immigrants, but just don't worry about it. Yeah, don't. Yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah, we got we got lots of illegals doing stuff in the news for sure. Yeah, do we? What else do we have? We've got uh, uh, the southern. Now people are saying the southern border is wide open. Uh-huh. They're and saying that illegals continue to pour across the border into our country, but one hundred. <laughs> as libs of TikTok points out. Uh, Governor Whitmer put out five tweets about George Floyd, but hasn't said a single word about Ruby Garcia, an innocent 25-year-old woman who was just recently murdered in her state by an illegal alien. Yeah, let's see this, please. The We have the picture. There we go. All right, look at that wonderful salt-of-the-earth young man there <sighs> who killed, killed her precious soul. Mm-hmm. Mm. Jeez. And then let's go to the next one. Let's go to uh, Alabama with the uh, immigrant raping uh, the 14-year-old girl. Look at that. All right. So he's uh, accused of rape. Raped a mentally incapacitated oh, young woman. No. Uh, no. In charge of rape. That's in Alabama. Now let's move over to. Would like me- like you to meet uh, Juan Luis Rodriguez. Now. Yeah. He's, he's a fun. Good guy. He's got. Uh, he has been arrested. Denton, Texas. It's just yeah. north of here. Yeah, and, and he's white, by the way. As you can see, it's a white male. <laughs> I Five can't foot three hundred and sixty pounds. 
Um, I told you. We're oh white. my gosh. Mm -hmm. Our classification in the United States is always white. It's a sexual assault of a child that this white man oh, is accused of. Uh, and also it. in Maryland, we have a, a <laughs> two-year-old was murdered. Uh, and the guy uh, was uh, mm. in a, a uh, Maryland county that was a sanctuary county. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's good. Yeah. <clears throat> so why are you pointing this out? Do you know that American citizens also commit crimes? <laughs> I do you do. know that? I do. Okay. Then I don't want to hear about it. Okay, but I don't want to hear about the but, illegals. But they're legally here. <laughs> right, is kind of right. the thing there. Yeah, that, like you're so you're sort of saying we don't need extra criminals here. That's right. Committing extra we, crime. We got plenty. Yeah, we're all full up. Wow. One hundred. One hundred. Do we still have time? Do we still have time for oh. this guy's story from uh, his recent experience flying on a plane? Yeah, Chris sent this. Uh, okay. Somebody sent this in. Uh, this is this yeah. Is, this is my friend. This is not good, Taylor. <laughs> Here we go. On my way home, I was flying from DFW to SLC in Utah. I board my plane, take my seat. Everything's fine. I take a look to my right, and there's an illegal immigrant next to me, which is not out of the ordinary. Happens every single time that I fly home to Salt Lake City, despite you know Governor Cox claiming that this is not a sanctuary state. Illegals simply don't exist here. Well, actually, he likes to call them New Americans, so that's the inclusive term. But anyways, I'm sitting there. And you know, it's just a normal day on my way home from the airport. And as he's flipping through these documents, I notice something. It says that he is a soldier, and not just that he is mm. a soldier with military training and military experience, mm. but that he left his family, all of them at home. He had two daughters and a wife that he decided to leave at home. And I'll leave you with this to think about. When a man is fleeing war, he takes his family. When a man is going to war, he comes alone. Hmm. Oh. Wait, wait, hold on. Mm. Okay, I don't disagree mm. with anything he's saying there, but like, mm. how how mm -hmm. much you reading over this guy's shoulder? Like, you're yeah. getting all that information. Hey, he's from... a journalist, so okay. he better be looking. Huh. Okay. Huh. 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 Well, Democrats have a solution for this, right? We'll get to that uh, oh. after the break. Oh. oh, oh. So. Do they? Yeah. Look forward to that. Okay. The big because Democrats are solving virtually every. Every problem that America has. What was that phrase? The the governor of Utah <clears throat> calls them New Americans. New Americans. Yeah. <laughs> One hundred. That is despicable. Control the language, baby. That is despicable. Stop it. Stop bending over backwards mm -hmm. for people who have no respect for us, but we've got to have all yeah. respect for them. We got to change our language for them. Uh, no. Not going to do it. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. More Pat Gray Leash coming up. Ain't seen nothing yet. Pat Gray Unleashed. is here yeah on the blaze radio network and welcome to it great to have you with us triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three pat unleashed on twitter oh tammy from illinois has called triple eight oh nine hundred oh thirty three ninety three hey tammy hello hello hi hi what's up mm. Oh, I have a bingo right okay no 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 no, no. don't That's... you dare let her get away with this <laughs> Tammy, let's try Was again. Was she instructed? No, I'm saying you, when you win. Yeah, you got, it's got to be. Bingo! Like, bingo! Oh, sorry. Oh, I got a bingo. Okay, good. All right. Not bad. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Sad. Tell us where your bingo occurred. Um, I have one from the right corner going diagonally from mm -hmm. the right corner top okay. to the bottom left. Yes. Uh, formerly known, the X formerly known as Twitter. Uh, we also have Kamala saying, what can be unburdened by what has been. Uh, Pat Screech, KJP saying, yeah, I don't have anything on that. And uh, this is madness. So congratulations. That's a bingo. We get you set up with the code to get the merchandise and all that. Yes. And then we'll yes, send you the dozen Kexi cookies as well from Kexi.com. All right. Thanks, Thank Tammy. So Appreciate your listening. Right. Thanks for playing. What is the... Oh, that's fun. Oh, I've got a... That's a bingo. What is that from? It, Inglorious Bastards. Okay. It's 
Cool. Really? I love it. It's good. Yeah, you send it to me. Inglorious bastards? You did not send no, that I did not you. send that Nobody to you. in this room sent that Bro, to you. you said, let's play this. I when don't. we said bingo, I have the email. Find the, the email. Oh. Find the email. I'll bet that was from... Keith Malinak. Oh, I can't wait. That was not from Malinak. No, Or I me. I haven't seen the movie. I don't know any of this. I can't <laughs> wait. Maybe, uh, Rob? I don't know. Sent that? I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. If 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 I am wrong on this, then you can call me Joe Biden because I don't even remember <laughs> where that came from, bro. Okay. But he's looking for it. He's mm-hmm. seriously looking for the tweet. That's the problem, though. Yeah. Can we concentrate on the show no. and look for that afterward? No, he's looking for the And we can have tweet fun tomorrow. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I mentioned that, you know, we've got this border situation, uh, and fortunately, the Democrats have a solution to the illegal immigration okay. problem. And uh, here it is. Testimony that the border is secure. One of our highest priorities is to ensure that we have a secure border, and that oh. is what we are doing. They're securing yes, the border. The border is secure. <laughs> the border is secure. <laughs> We mm-hmm. agree that uh, the border awesome. is secure. Oh, this is the good. border is closed. It's closed. We have a secure border. <laughs> In terms of... Invasion is not a word that I would ever use. Mm-hmm. Listen, like, nobody stays awake at night worrying about the southern border. Oh, really? Huh. Border is both sovereign and secure. <laughs> both sovereign I and just, secure. Uh, one thing to say. Lawlessness. Violence. We've done the work. We've done the work. And there it is. There's the... Re- My gosh. Wow. Stop the invasion. Mm. Who was the racist that put that together? Thank you. Oof. Wow. 100. That is... <laughs> totally the title of today's show. 100. 100. Yeah. Uh, that is absolutely astounding, isn't it? Just how out of touch and out of step with the American people they are. Do you know that for the first time I can ever remember, the border is the number one issue nationwide for voters this year. The number one over the economy, it's the border. Again, thank you, Greg Abbott. I was about to say credit where thank credit you, is due. Greg Abbott. Uh, he doesn't do everything great. But this was one of the most brilliant political moves of all time because it woke up the East Coast on this. So uh, I I applaud him for that. Sending the illegals on buses, little trips to New York City, <laughs> Chicago, Illinois, Boston, Massachusetts, Martha's Vineyard. Oh, yeah. As DeSantis sent them. I mean, it's done wonders. It's woken up the American people. Because if you weren't in a border state, you had no idea. Yeah. You didn't care about it. Well, now they do. And you're welcome. Yeah. And, and, and uh, Governor Ducey in Arizona was on that uh, kick as well uh, until you know he mm. left office. And mm-hmm. then you get uh, Katie Hobbs, who ended that. Uh... Yeah. Stupid. So congratulations, Arizona. What a terrible choice they made. Did they make it, though? <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, okay, I what? What do we got? If you're ready, yeah, I'm ready. All uh, right, so Joe. He's proven. I, I have guess, proved this. Sent- so Joe, go ahead and put the first picture with the email from Keith, not the other one. All right. Okay. I don't know. All right, what Keith Malinak, June 4, 2023. Okay. After they repeat the fifth squares oh, cover, hell. perhaps. Perhaps. Done. And then when you click on the link, show oh. me the next picture. Oh, it goes to that. Oh, good. And that's oh. the this. <laughs> <Tell me Joe laughs> Ooh, that's a bingo from the movie yeah. Inglorious Bastards. That's annoying as hell. Whoever that's sent that to really you, really weird. You should just get rid of it. They them hacked right into Keith's email. They did. Listen to Pat. Listen to Pat. He's the host. <laughs> and sent you that uh, that fraudulent message. I don't that's care incredible. For that. Yeah. No, you shouldn't care for it. It's wrong. One hundred. 100, 100 wrong. 100. Yeah. I don't want to hear that drop ever again, actually, now that I think about it. I will say this about the border situation, though. The border <laughs> the border is secure, uh, and it will be even more so because Biden has just, in this budget, in this Biden budget, they've funded border security, and it's about time. Like $380 million dollars. To support enhanced border security mm. in Egypt, <laughs> Lebanon, Oman, oh, Tunisia, where's this going? And Jordan. 
So, I thought, wow. So we're set now. Okay. Now we're set. Uh, so Egypt, congratulations. Yeah. Oman, Tunisia. It's great. You didn't even talk about Ukraine. I, I didn't. My word. I didn't. Uh, I think that's in a separate issue uh, uh, line item uh, in this budget. So, But that's great. $380 million to the other countries to secure their borders. I mean, it's not even that's... America last with the left. No. It's, it's not America not, not, not at all. At all. Amer- not at all. America not at all. <laughs> I mean, Mm-mm. you can't make this stuff up. Mm-mm. You could, just nobody would believe it. Speaking of immigration, we haven't checked in on Europe in a while to see how... Oh, gosh. Cultural enrichment has been going there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. You know, because it's going really well with their immigration immigration issues. Yeah. Uh, mm. yeah. We've got this uh, airport video, <laughs> Okay, I guess. so this is a Charles de Gaulle airport, and what they're attempting to do... Paris, France. ...is they are trying to get mm. this guy deported who is uh, in the country illegally, in France illegally, mm-hmm. and he's been stirring up trouble. And so it's time to get him out of the country. So he's at the airport, and then his buddies show up, and then this happens. Congratulations. Mm. Yeah. Just trying to deport the illegal. Jeez. And there you have it. Okay. So So a brawl breaks out at the airport. Right. Holy. And honestly, in this segment, we could give you any number of videos. Um... Obviously, we had the heavy stuff happening in America. We showed you the mug shots and all the crimes being committed there. Yeah. Uh, one of the things we're not showing here is that there's a neighborhood uh, in France where um, the illegals have this drug trade set up, and they're just patrolling uh, this neighborhood now uh, mm. to, to keep everybody in line. I mean, you talk about no-go zones. I mean, it's worse than that in France. Mm. But You so, got France being overrun. You have Sweden being overrun. Yep. Uh, these European nations are in real trouble. Absolutely. And I talk about the pot calling the kettle black. though. I know. I know. And like I said, uh, after how heavy it was with, uh, all of the, uh, the murders and uh, all of the terrible stuff happening here. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, I thought in this segment, I I noticed a pattern emerging lately in Britain with the illegals that are there, the immigrants, uh, the new arrivals, uh, we have new Americans, right, according to the Salt Lake mayor or the governor of Utah. Do we have some new British? Yeah, we got some new British who, I guess, in? don't understand mm. buses and, like, what oh. they're supposed to do. So let's uh, play the first clip here. Okay. Apparently, <laughs> you, I don't know if you understand, that's a, supposed to get on the bus, not try to block the bus. So Do we I, know why he's doing this? this I, I think he doesn't have fare uh, to get onto the bus, and so now oh. he's mad, and the driver's just oh, like, okay. I gotta go, bro. <laughs> All right, so go to the next clip. Go to the next clip, please. Another immigrant with pause. a bus. I didn't have my oyster, and driver okay. didn't want to let me off. And pause this, pause this. The oyster, I had to I had to Google this, because I'm like, is that just a poor transcript or whatever? No, that's what they call, basically, you know, in New York, we have the uh, the Metro card or whatever. Yeah. The oyster gets you on the tube and on the buses and stuff oh. like that. And so, yeah. since he can't get on, ain't nobody going going anywhere I <laughs> so here we go again this is uh, this guy's uh, this is just society is just decaying yeah i know it's just buses it's imploding but it's everywhere and then this guy lays right in front of it in nap time oh in front gosh. of the bus so These again are all separate occurrences yeah uh-huh again i don't know what's going on with I mean, britain how is it that some man men don't get out of the bus and drag this guy out of the way so we can get on with our day. Yeah. Uh, excuse me. You just drop this. I mean, this guy's got to be inebriated. He's like, did you drop this? Is that yours? Wow. Is that yours? <laughs> is that yours? Oh, is that yours? Is that yours? <laughs> oh, man. Jeez, the entitlement. Mm-hmm. Uh, they just think they own the place. And, and, and then once they do come to your country, you hope they assimilate and become good little mm-hmm. Britons, right? And mm-hmm. then they can, you know, pay taxes and work hard and just get along with everyone. Mm-hmm. No. Is that what's going on? No, we got a couple of uh, hmm. uh, Muslim dudes that want you to know uh, uh, they're not interested in that. Oh. Our hatred for the non-Muslims doesn't stop us from being unjust to them. My argument would be it also doesn't stop us from coexisting with them, living in a society with them. But I can be in a land where I lived with live with these people, but yeah. I have hate for them. I don't like them. I say that is mm-hmm. at a, at the time that we're living in today is very very hard to claim that imposing oh. onto you 
saying that you have to accept the British values. And Muslims are being put in situations Pause where they are. Pause it for are. a second. Are you a Muslim okay. first? Or They're in Great Britain. People are asking them to accept British values. In laws. They and they're pissed off about that? Yeah. Get the hell out. <laughs> you can't go to home, them, bro. What are you I oh man. What are you doing there? <laughs> I just What are you doing? <laughs> All right, let's see the rest. This is incredible. Ask, are you a Muslim first or are you a British first? Yeah, but these are easy questions to answer. I'm a Muslim first. Like, what's the issue? But that's you not being loyal to the country that you claim to be from. You see, that's what Muslims are now. By saying that statement, you're an, you're 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 a foreigner from us now. Mm. <laughs> okay. Wow. Jeez. I don't know, man. Holy. Uh, they cow. act like they My act like gosh. the British on some uh, wow uh, crazy empire kick. Yeah. Went to their country. Right. <laughs> Bro, right. you came to them. Yeah. Stop. Wow. It's not like Britain is on a crusade right now. <laughs> you know, tromping through the Middle East, taking over your country. <laughs> Incredible. <sighs> it just it boggles the mind, doesn't it? It's the collapse of the Western world. Well, it is. It is. And welcome to it. Mm-hmm. Really fun place to be, isn't, isn't it? it, though? Yeah, it's a great place to be. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, All right, let me tell you about uh, My Patriot Supply. Are you prepared for whatever eventuality? I mean, you can see in the news that we share with you every single day that we're not in a really good place right now. Um, So it might be a really good time to stock up on food from My Patriot Supply. We've seen how easy it is to disrupt our supply chain. Just had another example of it this week with the key bridge and these things keep coming up who knows what's going to happen in the future who knows how bad the supply chain disruptions will be uh you might start with a three-month emergency food kit 22 food and drink varieties uh there's going to be no food boredom you know we've talked about this many times where it used to be the theory that well if you're hungry enough you'll eat a stick if you have to (laughs) No, you don't have to. See, First of all, I don't think you're going to eat the stick. Uh, but secondly, you don't need to because these are delicious meals that provide 2,000 calories a day. No starvation. They're sealed inside ultra-durable four-layer packaging. So these ready-to-eat meals, are they last up to 25 years. Stock up on all the food kits your family needs at my website, preparewithpat.com. That's preparewithpat.com. You get, you get each kit for $200 off. Protect yourself, protect your family. Get your kit uh, at preparewithpat.com. They'll ship fast and free. Preparewithpat.com. You're listening to Pat Gray Unleashed. One more thing on this uh, illegal alien situation, the border situation, and uh, as it applies especially to Texas and Greg Abbott, what he's doing. You know, there was a time when when illegals that arrive at the border, they'd simply cross the Rio Grande and make their way to a gate at the border fence, turn themselves in, and claim asylum. Man, you're in. Done. All right. Well, that was before uh, Greg Abbott turned Gate 36 into a militarized zone, fortified by rifle-toting soldiers, fleet of Humvees, and a forest of razor wire glistening in the desert sun. (laughs) According to Mario Jesus Nazareno, he said it looks like a prison. Good! Good! That's how it should look to you, because that's that's where you're going to go when you sneak across our border illegally. Or you should. Uh, the 47-year-old former boxer had just arrived at the border after traveling for weeks from his native Ecuador. He hoped to make his way to Florida, where he's got relatives. Now he and hundreds, if not thousands of others, are stuck right there at the border. <laughs> the governor's aim is to prevent illegals from reaching the gate, part of the 30-foot-high steel border wall. 
built during the Trump presidency and thus deny them a chance to apply for political asylum or other forms of relief that could allow them to remain in the U.S., just be released as we've been doing for decades. David Arau, 33 years old, who traveled for months from Venezuela, said, All we want is to give ourselves up, but the army won't let us. God! Another day of standoff at gate 36. This is something you're not hearing about, I don't think, a lot on the news. Uh, But Abbott has been amping up Operation Lone Star, which is the crackdown that he launched three years ago using National Guard troops and state police to deter illegals and narcotics smuggling from crossing the border. And it, of course, draws attention to what he argues is the Biden administration's failure to control the border, which is pretty obvious to everybody with half a brain. Uh, He's been trying to enact a statute passed last year known as SB4 that allows state and local authorities to arrest illegals simply for being in the country illegally. Yeah, it's an illegal act. I mean, this... It's interesting because this article is written completely from the standpoint of this is bad. And they call, they don't call them illegals. They're migrants um, in this story. Not new Americans? No, not new <laughs> Americans. But that's a nicer term. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised they're not using it. The Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, which put a temporary hold on that law last week, is scheduled to hear arguments in the case early next month. White House considers the statute unconstitutional, of course. Um And that legal battle is playing out right now. But Abbott is intensifying the efforts to get tough on the border, as evidenced by this Gate 36 situation. I mean, there have to be parameters on claiming asylum. You've got to be fleeing, you know, war, oppression, not just because you don't like it where you are. You're not doing well where you are. That's not asylum. If that's the case, if you're just looking for a better life, then apply to come here and do it legally. At what point do Americans get to flee our country and claim asylum in some other land? At what point? At no point, of course, Mm. because we're Americans and we don't deserve that right like everybody else has. In America, you can go enjoy yourself at a spa and, you know, relax and chill out all sorts of good stuff, the way our own Chris Cruz did yesterday. Mm. Chris, you had a... Uh, you had a spa day it, yesterday? It, interesting photos you posted on Twitter. I did. You guys make fun of me all day long, so I have to relax myself. Well, yes, I did oh. went to mm. the spa with Sarah, Glenn's director, so... Oh, you and Sarah Sullivan. Yeah. Went to Let's the spa. Let's see these pictures, yeah. Joe. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> God. And they put oranges on my feet, roast petals on my toes. You're supposed to eat oranges, man. Yeah. Guacamole you know, on my legs. Yeah, guacamole. What is that on your shins, man? Uh, guacamole, bro. Oh, Why? What, what does guacamole do for your shin? It's not mask. It's not guacamole. But Hold on. It was oh, awesome. What is it? It's like a mask. It's a mask. That's what she on called it. On your shin? On my shin. This. Yeah. What does it do? Look, look, it sh- look. smooths my legs. Does it? And then the... There it Why is. Why do your legs need to be smooth? You're a man. Don't be jealous. <laughs> and and whatever you paid that lady wasn't enough. I, I'm embarrassed she for you. She got Thank a you. good tip. Yeah. She uh, got a 20% tip. <laughs> yeah. I mean, good. I mean, 20% is expected. A good tip is, you know, 30 or 40 now. I was Whoa, gonna, I was expected? That's a good one. I was going to let it go. What did what the spa day cost you? Uh, $108. For how long? Uh, about an hour and a half. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Okay. No was, massage or anything? There was a massage in there. There was a massage. And a manicure and a pedicure. <laughs> you got a mani petty. I did get a mani petty. <laughs> Not a man. It's embarrassing. How is that embarrassing? <laughs> embarrassing. I'm taking care of myself. Uh, it's, I got it's a big wedding next month to go to. I got two weddings next month. Oh. So okay. I got to get. And you want your nails just right. Yes. And your shins have yes. to be smooth. Okay. And my heels. Hey, look. I'm. One hundred behind you. Uh huh. I've got one hundred. I've got I've got Joe in my ear, uh, <laughs> fully supporting you. By the way. Oh, oh. yeah, absolutely. He says Good. pedicures are a wonderful thing. I wear Crocs every single day, without socks. My heels get Crocs crap. without yeah. socks. Yeah, 
and you get mm-hmm. out there in the chicken coop and Thank mess you. around and do stuff and yeah. Gotta and take then you care. need some guacamole on your shin at the end of that day. You what? really do. Honest, I understand. One hundred. Honestly, what is the green stuff they put on your? It shins? was a. Yeah, she said it's a mask. So. <laughs> It's don't masks go on your on face? Your face, yeah, that's what I thought too. That's weird. But then they can't charge him an extra twenty bucks and yeah. say, "No, your shin." That's a shin mask. Yeah, Those are shin, much yeah. more complex. And I had a mask also on my feet, where it's like hot wax and it turned into like this big old purple shoe. I would not like that. Wow, that's icky. Yeah, you don't that's touch icky. my feet. I oh mean, yeah, I forgot you don't have a, you have a thing for feet. Don't yeah. look at my feet. Don't touch my feet. Just... So does Jeffy. He's got a oh, foot. Oh really? Thing. Yeah, he's got yeah. a weird foot thing. Uh, anyway, I, I just, I don't have a weird foot thing. I just don't want people touching it. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank uh, you, that's, Jeffy. That's where I'm at. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> don't touch them. <laughs> okay. So, uh, April 8th, we've got the big, uh, solar eclipse. Big day. Week million from people. Monday. Total eclipse. Week from Million Monday. people. Uh, yeah. it should be fun. We got a total eclipse of the heart nothing and you can the do. sun and the there's sun. N- and there's nothing you can do because it's going to happen regardless yeah now it may be a cloudy day uh that would be oh my gosh bro supposedly one million people are headed to the dfw metroplex uh-huh. to overcrowd us we're already plenty crowded yeah. with 8.1 million people here now and then a million more in one day. I, I've been thinking, that be fun? you know, is it too soon to start checking the weather? And just as I had that thought, uh, Pat had Shannon Reed sent me, Reed Timmer, he's awesome, uh, sent me his tweet showing this is the forecast map. Now, the white okay. is the good area. Now, this is obviously a week and a half out. Who knows if it's a hold? Wait, the white is but good? The white is good. Because cloud- that looks like cloud I know, cover. I know. The cloud cover, you got huh. one system apparently a week and a half from now is going to be on the eastern side of America, and the uh, western side is going to be storm two. So we should be good right for, 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 yeah, who I guess know, who knows if this thing's gonna hold up this yeah. is a week and a half out but it's yeah. basically saying that the entire track is screwed except for texas if this holds it's not gonna hold which means we're yeah, gonna be the only have, ones with clouds they, they have no idea yeah. by the way uh authorities are saying that companies should treat this as a snow day so give people the day off because it's oh. gonna be so crowded mm. snow all right day. I bet they won't, but that's great advice. Thank you. Uh, Hillary Kennedy coming up next. Uh, She's got some updates on all kinds of things. This is Pat Gray Unleashed. Joined by Hillary Kennedy of the Four Minute Buzz, and of course HillaryKennedy.com. Just one L. Don't Thank use you. two. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> really bad Hillarys use two. That's exactly like, right. Yeah, as in Clinton, of course. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, uh, what's what's on your mind on the Arantes Pass, Texas thing? Okay, so this was brought to my attention yesterday by my friend Matt. It's kind of gaining some steam on social media, so I looked into it because I was like, what's going on in Aransas Pass? <laughs> it's a guy named Jason Followell. He's a resident there. He owns a gym there. Um, he's kind of becoming the hero that a lot of people feel this country needs. <laughs> he's been calling out some of the alleged <laughs> corruption from the local police and the city council in Aransas Pass. Um, so we're going to play a YouTube clip and he'll sort of explain what's going on. Okay. Jason follow all here, Rands Pass, Texas guys. Uh, I need people to stand with me. We need to do what I do across the country and in every single damn council meeting. This POS Chief Blanchard just got on live today on Facebook and made up all kinds of lies and deceit to the public because that's what that fork tongue snake does. <laughs> Please pay attention, Mm -hmm. listen, and learn, because as always, I'm going to show you transparency and the truth, and this Mm. lying SOB is still going to be working tomorrow, and they're not going to fire him. Why? Because our entire country is corrupt, and if we don't get up and do something about it, guys, our children's children are going to be slaves. Mm -hmm. Please mount up. Do what I do. Be a man. Mm. Keeping (laughs) off our, uh, I don't think I have them here, our burglary report card program again so if you see a little square card on your car it's because the officers at night are going around and they're going to be checking vehicles to make sure that they're secure if you get a passing score wonderful you did great you're helping us prevent crime if you get a failing score it it just serves as a reminder to you Mm. check your locks 
Take out your valuables, belongings. Don't leave things in plain sight <laughs> and keep your property secure. Guys, anybody else, light bulb go off in your head? Does this sound wrong? <laughs> if they're actually checking doors, meaning they're checking if they're unlocked, by unlocking them, well, guess uh -huh. what? Yeah. Fourth Amendment right Search time. Violations. What is wrong with these people? Wow. Mm. I agree. So he's been really upset about a lot of these little things. He's spoken mm -hmm. out about them. And then he's essentially <laughs> said the police department made up some bogus code violations at his business to get him on. He took them to court over it twice, as far as I know. Um, he's won. Oh. And so anyway, it's made him so upset. He's gone back to the city council meeting to let his voice be heard, and we have a clip of that as well. <laughs> what you say, you piece of Okay, oh, now, Lord. there it is again. I can talk like there that. It's a first uh, amendment violation. Uh, the guy's jacked. Yeah. Yeah. He's a big <laughs> Out. No, I'm not. He's the I'm cop. Not deal Tell me. It. I'm not. What What First Amendment right did I violate? I'm not. You're either going to respect this place arrested. or you're going to be asked to walk out. Mm. Am I under the so arrest of arrest? He used some profanity at the city council I'm meeting. Oh, Who am is among it us? prohibited? And so they were saying, you, you can't do that. But his attorney is like, you're violating his, his free speech rights. There's yeah. nothing yeah. in the Constitution that says you can't use profanity. Mm -hmm. So this has been going... Right. Back and forth. So anyway, he's been showing proof on his YouTube videos of what he says are corruption within the police department, saying they use taxpayer dollars for personal expenses, like a $1,200 personally <laughs> tailored suit from Men's Warehouse for the police chief, Blanchard, that he mentioned. In the Men's Warehouse video. has $1,200 suits? Well, apparently mm, they do. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I think a lot of viewers are going to find his, his fight and his determination to kind of take on basically the whole city of Aransas past kind of inspiring. So he's posting new videos every day and he's going back and requesting, you know, detailed expense reports from the police department, from the city council hmm. and has been showing that there is some, some unsavory things going on there. So anyway, if you want to check out his YouTube channel, Weird. it's Jason follow well, 3323. But he's like, if we don't all stand up and do this and he's like, if I have to do this myself, Fine, I will do it myself, but he's really encouraging people, look into what's going on in your own city. Aransas Pass, Texas, is not one of the places you would think that is uh, steeped in corruption. Right. <laughs> what a, doesn't spring immediately to mind. No, but it's it's definitely wow. getting a lot of attention now because he's decided to shine a light on Good it. Good for him. So, yeah, so... That's great. Jason Falwell. Okay, so now I want to talk about another hero, the Ultimate Fighting Championship Hall of Famer. His name's Mark Coleman. Now, this was he was before my time, so I, I did not watch him fight. He was like the first heavyweight champion back in 1997, and oh. then he was inducted into the Hall of Fame. He was like the fifth one um, inducted in the UFC Hall of Fame. But anyway, he recently saved his family from a burning house. He saved wow. both of his parents in Toledo, Ohio, um, the family dog woke him up, I guess, and smelled smoke. And so he saved both of his parents. No. He ran back in to try and save the dog, which sadly did not oh. happen. Oh. But he said, I'm still the happiest man in the world. I'm so lucky. I can't believe my parents are alive. So his, his parents walked away, no serious injuries. Um, Mark Coleman, however, was battling for his life after saving, saving his parents. They now say he's up, he's alert, mm -hmm. he's recovering well, but he had to be airlifted from the scene and put into an induced coma. Oh, oh wow. Because he suffered. Was it burns or smoke inhalation? Smoke inhalation. Mm. So anyway, pretty amazing. But he yeah. said, um, his family said, we're a faithful family. We know God works miracles. And, you know, just to please pray for him. But yeah. talk about using that strength for a life-saving purpose. That's yeah. really incredible. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right, can I talk just for a minute about one of my favorite people. Oh, right here in front of everyone? You're going to talk about me and Pat? <laughs> That's cool. Okay, another one of my favorite people. <laughs> right. uh, Connor McGregor. He's, oh. ne he's never gone away. <laughs> no. And he's coming back. I mean, I talked maybe a year ago about him fighting Michael Chandler because mm -hmm. they were doing the Ultimate Fighter together. And anyway, nothing ever came of that fight. People were like, what's going on? So it might actually happen now this oh, summer. Really? Um, yes. So it was announced that it might happen. Announced on accident, kind of. It was another <laughs> oh, flyweight no. fighter named Cody Durden. He posted a video on social media and oh. he said, what's up, fight fans? I'm back in the octagon June 29th versus Carlos Hernandez at UFC 303. Michael Chandler versus the notorious Conor McGregor. Let's go, baby. Oh, wow. So okay. it might happen. What was the date on that? It's going to be June 29th. Oh, wow. At the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. So it's Vegas. a done deal, we know? Well, 
Dana White hasn't said anything. UFC uh, hasn't said anything, but this particular fighter may have leaked some information we weren't supposed to know. Sounds yet. like a contract is in possession, but not signed. But yes. <laughs> so, and Dana has mentioned recently that Connor's just really hard to, to nail down these days because he's been starring in the new remake of the movie, the, the 80s movie Roadhouse <laughs> yeah. with Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah. And if you haven't seen it, I was telling Pat before the show, like I've been watching it. It's it's pretty darn good. Yeah. I like it. Hmm. And uh. Conor McGregor is getting a ton of great reviews good. for his performance. <laughs> he says that he's the highest paid first time actor of all time. He wow. said, add that to the rest of my accolades. Okay. I think The hmm. Rock And then he did his little walk off the set. The highest there. paid non-actor. Yeah, oh, wow. That. Mm. So, um, but I think we have a clip of Roadhouse if you'd like oh, to. Oh, okay. Like to sure. Take a look. Hey, fellas. <laughs> Looks like you're having a schmuck. <laughs> I got a tip for you. Don't let no one get this close. Oh, wow. <laughs> so it's kind of Connor playing Connor. That's what it looks like, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but Jake Dillon, he said they had a great time filming together. And uh -huh. I mean, he, he does a really nice job in the movie from what I, I haven't finished it. I'm mm -hmm. like mm, halfway through. But anyway, okay. he, hmm. he looks great. It takes you days to watch movies, too. Yes, mm -hmm. mm. unfortunately. But yes, just be forewarned that if you don't want to see Conor McGregor's entire backside, mm? don't. I heard. I heard there's some nudity don't involved. Watch the film, and yes. it's him. It huh? is him. Yes. Uh, oh, that's why you're not watching. <laughs> okay. But yeah, I mean, I if you're gonna have to see some nudity, at least it's someone in shape. <laughs> That that that's a Hillary quote mm -hmm. right there. Right. If you're gonna, if you're have, gonna to have to see to some see nudity, it. at least it's someone in shape. <laughs> <laughs> that's her All right. that's her reasoning Moving on. yeah do you have an update on this mike tyson jake paul thing i do so it it might not happen what i, mm. I know it's disappointing that's july that would be. 20th so it's up in the air yeah it, here in dallas at the at&t stadium or in arlington mm -hmm. so yeah. that, that would be saturday july 20th mike tyson just for a refresher in, in case anyone's counting he's gonna be 58 in 58. june 58 i thought he was 56 jake 58 Paul's 27 Wow. So, yeah, that's, that's a pretty big. <laughs> yeah. Tyson has. I still actually... wouldn't want to fight Mike Tyson, though. No. no. The guy is an animal. He's a killer. Mm -hmm. I, we've watched these training videos of him. He looks as fast as he was when he was yeah. in the ring, uh, mm -hmm. when he was in his 20s. Would you say he's probably the scariest I would boxer say so. of all time? Oh, yeah. I, I would say so. For yeah. sure. So, I, I commend uh -huh. Jake Paul for being willing to try it. But yeah. Uh, but Tyson hasn't actually fought in a professional match since 2005. He did take on an exhibition match back in yeah. 2020 yeah, with Roy against, Jones. Yeah, Roy, yeah, right. Roy Jones I, I, yeah. I think he's actually fought Jake Paul before. Uh, we have, uh, see there, there we go. Okay. They, uh, they actually fought back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Tyson's punch Yeah, off. yeah, yeah. Anyway, I love so, that game. I, that was one of the greatest games that was a game. of, I never of got all time. past Tyson, man. Oh, yeah. You had to hit him in the stomach a bunch of times. No one told me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, what, what's going on? Why uh, are we not going to get this, maybe? So, they have to pass all of these tests in order to fight. Uh, an EEG, EKG, <laughs> and those measure, like, your brain damage, how mm -hmm. strong your heart is, all of those things. And people are saying, Tyson might not pass those tests. Oh, really? So, oh, if he wow. doesn't... Mm. It won't be. They could still make it an exhibition fight, but yeah, that's I not heard that was an option. Quite the same. Mm -hmm. why, why, so, what would be different about that? Like they could still get the same payout. No right? belt on the line. Oh. Yeah, so the the stakes aren't <laughs> yeah, quite as high. Yeah, they, it'd be the same money okay, probably. Okay. And you, he, how much money are they making from this? Do you know? Yeah, I don't know that. But I was trying to find it's that. Got to be a night, lot. But it, it, yeah, it's a ton. And I, he said that was the only reason he took the exhibition fight with Roy Jones back in 2020. He was like, I just wanted a quick, easy payday. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that ended up being a draw. Oh, so, and this is going to be on Netflix. Yes. If it happens. You yes. don't have to pay extra. Yep. Stream it on Netflix. <laughs> oh, I love so, that. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I think it'll be incredible to watch if they can pull it off. Yeah. It's but just, I mean, he's 58. He That's, had... Has there ever been... How old was uh, George Foreman when he when he fought his last fight? I'll find out. He was pretty old, too. But question. I don't know if he was 58. Man. Well, the record, too, I thought this was interesting. Tyson's record is 50 wins, 6 losses, 44 knockouts. Jake Paul has 9 wins, 1 loss. Or, yeah, and he six, lost to... And, and 6 uh, knockouts, so... Uh, what's Fury? Mm -hmm. Like, Tyson Fury's brother, right? Do you think it's 
Do you think that he's worthy of fighting Mike Tyson? Oh, wow. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, no, but I think it's probably a big money draw, and yeah. that's that's why he's doing it. Yeah. I mean, they both want to make a huge bundle of money. It's hard to blame him. Right. I, I, I'd like to as well. Right. Uh, how many times could you be punched by Mike Tyson for $10 million? That's or $20 a good million? Point. Zero. I mean, you're going to go down in infamy. Mm-hmm. And be mega mm-hmm. wealthy. So yes. Why not? Yeah. As long as you don't get brain damage from it, which you well, could. Yeah. I mean, that's and a that is scary. the concern with Mike Tyson. They're like, how much damage yeah. is actually there? Is this a fair fight? So I hope it happens. So I'm looking up George Foreman stuff. He was a heavyweight champion at the age of 49. Mm. And then, uh, so I don't know when his last fight was. He was trying to come back at 55, but that fight never materialized. So. Mm. Tyson mm. is going to have him beat by at least several years. Wow. Yeah. I, I just jeez. Ooh, I wow. really want this to happen. But honestly, yeah, too. the state of Texas needs to back off. If a man wants to get into a ring, right. what regardless of, is that of yours? Thank you. It's just life. Leave him yep. alone. <laughs> well, if it happens, I think upper management here mm-hmm. needs to know. We've got to have somebody there on the scene oh, we need doing a, the play by play. We need a box so, at AT&T. Right. Just putting that out there. Company bo- Do you have a theory on the bridge thing? What happened? What brought down the bridge? Just an accident? Probably just an accident, right? Just move on. Pretend I didn't ask. I, of course, I don't think it's an accident. Oh, you don't think it's an no, accident? I don't think it's an oh, accident. Oh, wow. You're with Laura Lar- Logan? A- anytime it's the simple explanation of... Mm. They lost power and it was unavoidable. Yeah. And they, they, mm-hmm. they any time the May government says it's not terrorism before the sun rises. A hundred percent. I'm with you. I think at the second that they call it that soon, mm-hmm. it's definitely a terror attack. <laughs> That's what and I they feel. don't want that on Joe Biden's watch here right before the election mm-hmm. because they've been letting anybody right. and everybody into our country. See, Hillary knows. See, so, Hillary knows. She knows. Yeah. She knows. Yeah. All right, appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks for having me on. Be watching Thank for you. you on the Four Minute Buzz coming up in just a few minutes. All right. uh, when the time comes to buy or sell a home, you need somebody on your side who really knows what they're doing because it's a huge investment. If you're selling your home, you want to get the most money for it. If you're buying, you want to get the most home for your money, right? And that's where a great realtor comes in. And that's real estate agents I trust.com. Go there, it's a free service. We provide it to you free of charge. Don't have to worry about a thing. We just get you together with the greatest uh, realtor in your area, and you're off to the races with them. And then they give you the great advice you need on what you should do. Should you do do some remodeling, some updating of your home? Should you leave it alone and sell it as is? These are the experts that you can turn to. Go to realestateagentsitrust.com. That's realestateagentsitrust.com. Is unleashed. <laughs> well, you want to? Hillary was talking about you know government corruption and uh, mm-hmm. idiocy, secrets, and, and, yeah, just mm-hmm. terrible stuff with that with that the the Aransas Pass there, whatever it was. I've got a story out of Oakland, California, that is going to leave you enraged. Oh. And, uh, okay. Cause I mean, we don't have enough of that in our lives. No, no. But, but Joe, can you please, I forgot this story. I, I just looked at the sheet here. Clip 18. There's graffiti on a wall in Oakland, California. And look at how the city is handling it. Wheelchair bound, Oakland born, 102 years old, Victor Silva Sr. often finds graffiti painted onto his back fence of Mm. his Oakland home where he's lived and paid taxes for 80 years. Earlier this month, he got a violation citation from the city of Oakland to remove it by Tuesday the 19th or face an $1,100 fine plus an additional $1,277 for each failed reinspection. It was so absurd, it's like a joke. If you if you wow. drive around the city and see the graffiti everywhere, it's just, I don't know what to say. I thought somebody's crazy. <laughs> In his younger years, before the wheelchair, he often painted over the graffiti himself. Had a roller and a paintbrush and painted it. It was very, very easy. Because I was a contractor, you know. I'll be 103 in two months or so. Let's slow it up a little bit, you know. These days, that task falls to his 70-year-old son, Victor Jr. My it's gosh. hard to keep up with it, because as soon as we get it painted, it's good to be graffiti on it again. Mm-hmm. And it won't last. But, like you said, there's graffiti right there. Who's fixing that? Now, this utility box <laughs> has six different kinds of graffiti on it. 
I wonder if the utility got a citation. The family owns a nearby mm. small commercial building which has been broken into three times in the last year. Three. On one occasion, Victor Jr. found a person inside. Mm. In each case, he called 911. And I'm put on hold every time. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's hard to understand where our tax dollars are going. They can't answer 911, but they can come out and hassle you about a fence. I had yeah. to ask. How does one live to 102 or 103? Very easy, just keep breathing and <laughs> you know, behave yourself. I would hate to think that there's other 100-year-old people that are being harassed like this. Oakland has to, oh has to change. Gosh, it's just... My gosh. <laughs> 102 years, almost 103, and, and they're demanding great. that he paint over the graffiti. Well, I mean, look at him. He's clearly in great yeah, shape. he's in great shape. So leave him alone. I mean, he needs to get out there and, and paint that. Am I right? You're right. Stay in shape. 100. And whatnot. 100. Yeah. Yep. Can absolutely. you believe the city of Oakland? Shame it's on insanity. you. Insanity. That's an, it's embarrassing. Graffiti all over that town. Gosh. And he's already painted it multiple times. We saw the video there. Yeah. Their business get, keeps getting broken into. I realize when you're 102, only a couple months from 103, you probably don't want to pick up your life and move somewhere. But Oakland, California, what is up? Jeez. Boy. Like, they don't have other problems to worry about in Oakland. they got to worry about the graffiti on this guy's wall. He's Are you serious? He's been in that house since World War II. Yeah. 80 years? I bet he's seen some changes in wow. that city. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Namely, I'm sure the price valuation of his house has probably changed a little bit. <laughs> what do you want to bet that was like 1000 to $5,000 when he bought it? <laughs> and now it's probably, I don't know. Millions? Get that address. Look on Zillow. See how far back it goes. <laughs> Jeez. Honestly, if if they're gonna keep messing up his fence, that <clears throat> community should get together uh, every time and just repaint it. Either that or stand guard at it. Yeah. And find out who keeps doing that. Oh yeah. my gosh. And of course, the person who's doing the graffiti, they don't owe anything. No. They're not paying a price. That's just fine. Yeah, we're not even gonna bother to find out. I mean, how tough would it be for the city to put up a uh, a, a camera? Mm -hmm. and find out who's doing it I mean, and that, then arrest them there's so much wrong with this country and it's all yeah. wrapped up in that two minute uh, news piece no kidding terrible yeah it's awful mm -hmm. uh, alright but there are authorities there are uh, law enforcement agents who have things down who have been highly trained <laughs> who are highly sought after okay we have we've got a bike cop training video Oh yeah! Oh yeah! So okay. to to show where th the government is doing things really smoothly and really well. I don't know what it is. How do, how does one join a bike squad <laughs> in any particular law enforcement agency? Uh, here's well, first of all, you have to be elite. We know that. We know that. Right? We you got to be elite. Yeah. So so uh, let's play this video. I don't know what city this is from, but ooh yeah, look at that, huh? You got to be able to fling your bike around in a circle. Look at right? that. Now okay. this is tough. All right, uh, you're pulling going, a gun. Yeah, and then you can take your hands off the, the <laughs> look, ma, no hands for like three seconds. And then Clearly an elite, an elite officer there. Could he join the Miami bike squad, do you think? Uh, it's tough, right? That's it's tough. hard. Yeah. You don't know. You don't yeah. know. Move back. Move back. Oh, oh. Yeah, my foot hung up there on my so fanny pack. So smooth. <laughs> look at that, huh? But see, Look he's spinning it around. So wow, you don't that's impressive. Be in the radius. Yeah. Around him. Apparently, you needn't be in shape, though, for the bike squad. <laughs> you weren't supposed to point that out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's not, it's not part of it. No. So don't worry about that aspect. <laughs> Ooh, good times. <laughs> I'll be safe out there. All right. And, of course, uh, Keith has been pushing animal videos. What? And oh, you so, want to do an animal video? Do I want you to? You can't go wrong with Rockstar. Am I right? You're right. This guy's good. Watch yeah. this. Let's play tag. No. Yes. I don't know how. It's easy. You just get close to somebody, then you touch them like this, and you say tag. Tag. Oh, you cheat. Let me tag you back. How am I cheating? Because when you tag, you got to run away real fast so you don't get tagged again. Okay, tag. Not run away. It's too late, tag. You got to catch me, big fella. You hit me in my face. I don't want to play. You hit me in my face. Oh, big softy. Why are you so sensitive? Whatever. Come on, try to tag me back. Put your hands up. Come on. Put your hands up. All right. Uh -uh. I can Big old piles can't hit nothing. Come on, guys. Tag. Oh, I'm going to circle around you. Watch this. Right your back. <laughs> you know what I think? What? I think you've been drinking Red Bull. That's why I don't even want to play. Tag. Uh, 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 you 
tried to trick me. Uh huh. Red Bull gave me wings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why you so jumpy. <laughs> Yeah, you might be right about that. Mm. <laughs> He's so good. He is good. He's Those fun. are entertaining. Mm-hmm. They're fun. Yeah. What's the talented Chihuahua? Oh my gosh! Watch the Chihuahua. Let's just knock these out. Yeah. Play, play, the play the video. Right. Watch this. All right. Look, he picks up the rubber band mm. and he's shooting the balloons. It's like a carnival game. Look how he's watching. Duh, what? Oh no, it gets better. <laughs> That's only the first video. Okay. <laughs> All right. So okay. Now watch this one. See? Look at this. Yeah. Look, look how he's balancing. Oh, wow. <laughs> what in the world? Is that not the craziest thing you've ever seen? Come on now. It's impressive. It's, imp- it's impressive. It's imp- that, that's yeah. a little muted. That's a little subdued, that reaction, sir. <laughs> the Chihuahua was very... It was impressive. Talented. Yeah, talented Chihuahua. I thought. All right. That's all I got. That's all I got. Is he more talented than the garbage men? Oh, yeah. gosh. I don't know. We have time for the garbage men. How long no. is it? Oh, we don't? We should play oh, this in overtime it. today. All right. We got we got lazy garbage men coming up on overtime. You don't want to miss them. <laughs> That's a big tease. That's a big tease there. You All don't right. want to miss one if you second. Use the code uh-huh. PATBINGO30 yeah. at blazetv.com to save you 30 bucks on a subscription. Sure, you could watch the. Uh, Alex Jones video? Sure you could. But... And it would give you access to all of the overtimes we do and other shows do as well. And the new movie. And, and the new movie we've the got new movie. out. Yeah, the Agua Donkeys. the incentive is the Lazy Garbage Men video. Yeah. You don't want to miss that. You promised it me. now, Pat. You Trust gotta pay me. it off. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up. This is Pat Gray Unleashed.